Good morning, Grace Church. My name is Linda Brink, and I serve on the worship design team. And I just want to welcome everybody for coming out in the heat today um, to join us. And if this is the first time here, uh, we are very happy to have you uh, worship with us, uh, your Grace family, and uh, give our, our Lord all of the glory. We have a wonderful service in store for you today, but I am going to spend some time going through some of the announcements. There's a lot in here. So please uh, go through the details. I want to introduce our new pipe organist, uh, Jane Damhoff. There's a lot about her history there. She tells a little bit about and just want to welcome her to our family and thank her for being willing to play the organ for us once a month. It's camper this week is Elizabeth Stafford. She'll be attending the team specialty week fishing camp from July 14th through the 19th. So please put Elizabeth in your prayers. Coffee hour for the summer. Uh, during the summer months of June, July, and August, we need still some sign-ups for July and August, so uh, please uh, consider helping us with that service. That would be great. The Teal stickers are still there, so um, if you shop at Teal's and you don't collect the stickers, please save them. Uh, the community center is collecting them, and they'll be, uh, collecting, they'll be getting towels from Teal's. Um, there's info on the upcoming mission trip to Belize on August 25th. We've talked about that the last couple weeks, but please take a look at that in the bulletin. The upper room devotionals are on their way, so yay for that. <laughs> Our July missions offering will benefit the MCOR United Methodist Council on Relief for the Ukraine. 100% um, of this fund will provide direct assistance to those in Ukraine, as well as those trying to uh, flee to neighboring countries. So please consider that mission offering. Attention to all the youth, uh, grades 6 through 12. It's time to connect with Carrie. They're going to meet once a month. Uh, this month it'll be Tuesday, July 16th from 10 to 11. And they're going to be at the Firehouse Coffee um, place. And then Summer Community Vacation Bible School um, is Monday, August 5th through the 9th. Please sign up. Go out online. Get your kiddos signed up for that, uh, grades 6 through 12. Uh, we need volunteers as well, uh, so please come and help us there. If you are able, please stand for the ringing of the bell. Good morning, everyone. So it's great when technology works, and when it doesn't, it makes you want to pull your hair out. So the little hair pulling this morning um, because we do not have Wi-Fi. So our plan to have the song that is in your bulletin to sing that song with a video is not going to happen today, but we think we came up with a good alternative plan. How can you go wrong with holy, holy, holy? So. Debbie's going to sing a solo for you later, but we decided that being we're improving this morning a little bit, that she and I will lead you on the first two songs together. So sing out, join us loudly on Holy, Holy, Holy.
would help me speak. There may be now in the paths of sin some wonder whom I should seek. Oh, Savior, if thou wilt be my guide, though dark and rough the way, my voice shall echo the message sweet. I'll say what you So let us be in a time of prayer. Lord, dearest God, we come to you today to worship you, to glorify you, and to glorify your holy name, to call your name out above all of the other names. We come today to be reminded that your voice speaks to each and every one of us in new and in different ways through new and through different people, new and different events. Today we pray that you will help us hear your voice, to listen for your voice, and to respond to your voice. We thank you for all the gifts that you have blessed us with, our health, our family and friends, our finances, and for the community that we call Grace Church. We also ask for your forgiveness. Forgiveness for our inappropriate thoughts, our inappropriate words, and our inappropriate actions. Help us to learn from them and from our mistakes and to do better. To better serve you with kindness, mercy, all while promoting justice. And lastly, God, we pray for those who need to hear your voice, to feel your love, to feel your mercy, and to feel your helping hand. We pray for those in our church family, Heidi Herzberg, Joel and Delaine Burren family, Sarah Hedke, Leola Wendroth, Katie Hubrent, Terry Thompson, Berkeley Damhoff and Larry Schultz, Paul Larson, Nathaniel Crow, Gary Herzberg, Kevin Elwood, Carolyn Diedrich, and Dan Schwant. Lord, we pray for those who have been called up to serve in our military, Tom Gray and Lucas Holtz, Nate Burr, and William Nichols. 
We pray for those who have been called up to protect us through our police, fire, and ambulance, Dusty Velkamp and Dean Herzberg, Mike Chemish and Brad Melhop, John Colzer, Robert and Russell O'Fallon, Dan McClure and Alex Herzberg, Brittany Austin and Callie Smith, Trevor Wright and Jeremiah Johnson, Christine Story, and Jeremy Holtz. And now let us take a few moments to lift our silent prayers up. And now we take all those prayers, those that we have spoken silently and those that we have spoken aloud. We wrap them all up into the Lord's Prayer. Please join me in praying that prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right, would those who are young at heart and or our children please come forward for our children's message? Hello, hello. Oh, there we are. Okay, so so you've got a picture of Samuel, and we're going to talk about Samuel today and how God knew Samuel's name. So take a peek at your picture there. So here's how the story goes. There was a woman named Hannah, and Hannah wanted a son more than anything else in the world. And so she prayed and prayed to God to be able to have a son. And finally, she had a son, and she named him what, what, She named him Samuel. That's exactly right. But she had made a bet. Well, not really a bet. She had made an agreement with God and said that if she was able to have a son, 
she would have Samuel go and work in the temple, which is kind of a fancy word for church, once he was old enough to do that. Okay, so now Samuel is in the church working for a man by the name of Eli. Okay, so he's working for Eli. So Samuel goes to bed one night. That's the picture you've got in front of you. You can look at him getting ready to go to bed. And he lays down and he falls asleep. And all of a sudden, he hears a voice. And the voice says, Samuel, Samuel, wake up. So he's thinking, OK, well, maybe Eli, my um, buddy, is giving me a call. So he runs in and he says to Eli, hey, did you wake me up? And Eli said, nope, not me. So Samuel went back to bed. He just falls asleep. And sure enough, he hears this voice again, Samuel, Samuel. So he jumps out of bed. He goes back to Eli. And he says, Eli, I've already been in here once. Uh, did you call me? He goes, nope, did not call you. Now he's thinking, what in the heck is going on? So he goes back to sleep. And sure enough, he hears this voice again, Samuel, Samuel. So he runs back into Eli. And he says, OK, Eli, I'm really tired. It's been a long day. Quit pulling my leg. I just want to fall asleep. And all of a sudden, Eli realizes that it must have been God that was actually calling Samuel. So Samuel goes back to bed after Eli says, hey, this time when you hear that voice say, here I am, Lord. What can I do for you? So he goes back to sleep. Sure enough, God calls him again. And he wakes up and he says, OK, this time I know it's God. God, what can I do for you? And God gives him some instructions. So part of this story is sometimes people think that God only calls up adults. But what we're learning is God calls up kids too, just like you guys. He calls you guys up, all right? So he calls all kids up to say, follow me. So here we go. So now we've got some name tags. This is going to get really tricky with the mic. You know what? I'm going to put you in charge of helping me. Can you write a name tag for each one of these guys with their name on it? And then we're going to have you put it on your leg facing you, or we're going to have you put it on your skirt facing you. But we want the name tag so that you can see it. Can you hang on to that, Ben, for just a minute? Here's your name tag, Ben. All right. So I want this, Ben, I want this name tag on your, oh, I get to put it on. I want it right there. All right. Ellie, here's your name tag. And I want you to place it so that it's on your knee that you can look up at it. All right. Can you write one for your sister down there? OK, you guys got you. And then you want to give one to um, Eli. There you go. All right, you guys got yours. Oh, you need more name tags. There you go. OK, you got your name tag in the right spot? Can I have my pen back? Because I need one, too. All right. So when we're putting them on so that we can see them, why do you think we're putting them on that way? Because usually we put them on our chest so other people can see them. Any idea why we've got them the way we've got them? We've got them that way, guys, so that we can look down, see our name, and remember that God calls us all the time, too. So now we can remember when we're looking at our name tag, we can read it, we know our name, and it will help remind us that like Samuel, God calls children also. He calls children and he calls adults. So let's pray. Can we fold our hands, Ben? All right, here we go praying. Dearest God, today we all listen for your call. Perhaps you have something special for us to do. So when you call, we will answer. Here I am. What can I do? Amen. Amen. So you guys can head back to your seats.
You can keep your name tags right where you got them. It's not what I wanted, it's not something I understand. My circumstances seem so confusing, I'm placing it all in your hands. Your ways are high.
Is this mic working now, David? Perfect. So good morning, family and friends of Grace Church and those who are in our building and those who are joining us on our second campus online. And today we're going to be embarking on a new sermon series that we have entitled uh, God at Work. God at Work. And we're going to be learning about God at Work in the lives of David and Samuel in 1st and 2nd Samuel. And you can find those books in the Old Testament. So we're going to learn about the God at work in their lives, the then and there. And then we're going to be able to connect the dots to God at work in our lives, tying many of those stories together. So we're going to be looking at God's radical grace, how it worked then in very unexpected times, and how it continues to work now in very unexpected times. We're going to be looking at some stories. Today we're going to be talking about Samuel's call to ministry. We'll be talking later about David's unlikely anointed, being anointed as the king, and his victory over Goliath. We're going to be talking about the lesser-known eulogy that David, uh, when he proclaims, when he's mourning, uh, Saul and Jonathan. And then lastly, we'll finish up the series talking about David's full official kingship of, as the king of Israel. So all of these stories are going to highlight really unexpected ways of God's activity working among God's people. And these stories, are, again, are going to help us connect the dots to God's activity then and to God's activity now. So God working among us, God calling us, God responding to us, God seeing us, God saving us, and lastly, God uniting us. But before we begin, let's take a moment in prayer. God of all knowledge and power, please reveal your word to us today through the scripture, through prayer and music, and in message. Help us to hear, to attract, and to live into our vision for Grace United Methodist Church. Christ in us, Christ with us, and Christ through us. Amen. Okay, has anyone in this room, you can show us by a raise of hand, ever heard the voice of God calling you to do something? Yep, we got some hands up. We got some hands waving back there. So sometimes God calls us up to say something. Sometimes God calls us up to do something, maybe to step into a conversation, or maybe to step out of a conversation. Perhaps he calls us to step up into a mission field, or perhaps he just calls us up to do something that's been tugging on our heart for quite some time. Yep, I think many of us have been called up and even felt that call to do something or to move into action. And God does call us up. He calls us up to do his work, to be his hands and feet, to be his light and love, and to be his mouthpiece for those that he has put in our spaces and in our places. So I'd like you to take just a minute, and you can think about this privately. I want you to think about the last time that God called you up to do something. I want you to think about how it looked, how it felt, were you scared, were you confident, were you not sure what was going to happen next? Did you take a pass, or did you step into that space? Just take a moment to think about it. You see, my friends, God calls us all up. Calls us all up at different times and in different places. I remember my call to ministry. I remember exactly when it happened. It happened in November of 2011. I was in the third pew from the back, sitting there with my mom. And I heard Pastor Rick talk about uh, when he was at seminary. 
and that's when I heard the voice of God calling me into ministry. Heard it another time, my friend Diane and I were driving in a big SUV in Colorado. We had my daughter in the back, and we had pulled up into this space. It was a blizzard. Found out we couldn't get turned around, so we had to back down the space. And all of a sudden, I heard this voice in my head yell, stop. And I slammed on the brakes, don't know why, and within 30 feet behind us, a train blew by us going 60 miles an hour. We couldn't see it. We couldn't hear it in the snow because of the snow and the blizzard. So I'm sure we've all got those times, whether they were for safety or whether for ministry work or for whatever, where we heard God's voice. So this morning, we're going to hear and we're going to study about God calling up Samuel. And you heard a little bit about it during the kiddos' message. But you're going to listen to how Samuel was really caught off guard by the voice of God. But Eli, who was his mentor, the priest who was bringing him up into the priesthood, actually finally understood that it was the call of God. So let's hear how that story plays out. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again. Samuel, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. So that's quite a story. Now you've heard it twice this morning. Raise your hand if you remember hearing that story before or even bits and pieces of it. Yeah, pretty familiar story to many of us in the Bible, for sure. Now, we're going to spend a little bit of time this morning landing on some of the behaviors that Samuel went through as he heard God calling him up so that we might be able to position ourselves in front of God in order to hear also. So our first slide is going to talk about what we need to do is position yourself close to God. Position yourself close to God. So for Samuel, that meant following his mom's request to be mentored by Eli, a religious leader. You see, Samuel's mom was unable to have children for years. She made a promise with God, hey, if you allow me to have a son, at some point in in life, I will turn him back over to you, and he can move up into the priesthood. So at about age three, which is what we suspect Samuel was, Samuel went to the temple and he started his tutorship or mentoring under Eli. So in our story, Samuel was sleeping, heard someone calling him, assumed it was Eli, and checked it out. And a matter of fact, you've heard him, he checked it out three times. So that's how Samuel positioned himself closer to God. So our question is, how do we position ourselves closer to God? Well, we can certainly carve out time to spend in God's Word, in the Bible. Now, I don't care if you read your Bible on your phone, I don't care if you read it on your Kindle, 
I don't care if you read the paperback version. I don't care if you read a hardcover version. Um, but there are many, many ways of technology that God has given us to find our preference on how we stay and read scripture. Because we know the Bible is full of stories that pertain to people then and there that we can now help us understand our lives for the here and now. We can also lead a Bible study. We can attend a Bible study. We can stay in community with our Grace family folks. We can stay in community with the Catholics or the Presbyterians or the Lutherans or the other folks that we've got around town. We can stay in relationship with our mentors. That also helps us stay closer to God. And we can certainly attend and participate in worship services. So that's how we can position yourself to stay close to God. Next, we can find a place to regularly serve God. Now, Samuel at this time was most likely part of the temple, probably actually living in the temple. And of course, it was his educational goal. It was his career path to learn more about God and to serve like a priest in training. So Samuel was literally a priest in training. And that's how he was serving God. Now, you may not be called up to be a priest. You may not be called up to be a pastor. You may not even be called up to be a church leader. Although you are called up to regularly serve God. So, how might that look for you? Well, perhaps you regularly call a friend in need. Perhaps you are walking alongside a friend or a family member in need. Maybe you're volunteering some of your time at the Painesville Community Center or some of the other volunteer organizations that we've got around town. Maybe you're trying to be a Christian mentor, or maybe you're trying to find a Christian mentor. Maybe you're just trying to figure it out and hear the voice of God. So using your voice perhaps to even sing in choir. Maybe it's to help up in the AV area or some of the other areas in the church. Somehow figuring out how to be the hands and feet, the light and love of Jesus. That's how we can find a place to regularly serve God. Next, we heard we need to listen for God's voice. Now, Samuel heard the voice. He didn't realize it was God. He checked it out with Eli three times. And after Samuel's conversation with Eli, Eli realized what was going on. And God was speaking directly to Samuel, for whatever reason, bypassing Eli. So Eli coached Samuel to listen to the word, to listen to God's voice. Now, if you go in and read the rest of the scripture that we're not going to cover this morning, part of that message that God gave Samuel to pass on to Eli was some pretty tough information. But he did it anyway, because he was listening for the voice. Now, I'm not sure about you all this morning, but lots of times during the day I find myself asking God, just give me a little word, I'm stepping into a tough situation, I'm going to have a tough phone call to make. Somebody's just come into the office and brought in a really interesting situation. And I'm not sure how to step into it. I'm not sure what to say. I'm not sure what to do. So you guys are going to laugh at this. But many times I go into the ladies' room. It's not because I need to use it. It's just because I need to regroup and spend a minute to just be there away from folks to see if I can hear God's voice before I have to step into that situation. Now, I'm not proposing that you all do that, because it's going to be a very busy ladies' room, but I am going to propose that you think about how you can remove yourself from wherever you are, regather your thoughts to step forward to really listen for God's voice. And then, once we've heard the voice, of course, when God calls, we're called up to respond. We actually do need to respond. So when God called up Samuel in our story, he followed Eli's instructions and he responded. And you could hear Samuel say in that scripture, he said, speak for your servant is listening. Speak 
for your servant is listening. We can only speculate how weird that must have been for Samuel. I mean, I'm sure he's thinking, I'm a kid. Why are you talking to me? You bypass the mentor over there. Or he might have been thinking, I am scared to death. I have no idea what you're going to tell me. I'm sort of kind of even just learning who you are. And now what am I supposed to do with this message? Yeah, had to be pretty unnerving for Samuel. So let's bring that to the here and now. The here and now. We're learning that God's chain of command is really based on faith. It has nothing to do with our age. It has nothing to do with our tenure. It has nothing to do with the length of our walk with God. He can speak to any of us at any single time, every single moment. So in finding faithful followers, God is looking for us all the time. And you know, raise your hand if you think God has a sense of humor. Oh my gosh, God has a sense of humor. There's an inside pastor's joke. I don't know if you've heard it from any other pastor, but when we get together, we laugh and yuck it up, and we talk about our experiences during the week or what's going on in our lives, and we kind of pastor each other. And we always end up back with that same old story. Did you get up in the mirror this morning? Did you look in the mirror and did you start laughing and say, God, could you not have picked anybody better than me? There's got to be somebody out there that is more equipped to do this job than me. And evidently God's laughing. He said, nope, I picked you, my friend, so get on with it. Get on with the ministry work. So God does have a sense of humor for sure. So now we're going to finish this part of the scripture. So let's listen in on how Samuel responds when God actually speaks to him. First Samuel three fifteen through 19. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me, all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord, let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. So there it is, my friends. When God calls, we actually do need to listen and we do need to respond. And so very, very difficult at some times. Although God calls each and every one of us up for such a time as this. God knows the big plan. He knows the big picture. We don't know it. Certainly we don't know it. Sure be a lot more convenient if we did know it, but we don't. So we have to trust and obey, listen for the voice, and respond to it. So my last question for you this morning that I'd like you to ponder, <coughs> what is God calling you up to do that you have not heard or have not responded to, but you know it's there? Let us pray. Dearest God, the master planner of all the universe and every inhabitant in it, please give us the ears to hear your call, the ears to hear your voice, and the discernment to know that when you are reaching out to us, calling us up to be your hands and feet and your light and your love, we pray that we will be able to hear you and to move our feet to do your work. Amen. So this morning, you have another opportunity to be the hands and light, the love and, of Jesus Christ, and that is through our weekly uh, tithes and offerings. So would our ushers please come forward? Uh, what you give us today through the tithes and offerings, whether it's here or whether you jump on PainesvilleGrace.org and give there, 
or you can scan the QR code that is in your bulletin. We appreciate your extravagant generosity because it allows us to do ministry, not only in these walls, but outside these walls, which is equally as important. So thank you for your extravagant generosity this morning. God, we ask that you would bless these tithes and offerings and all the man and woman hours that we spend each and every day praising and glorifying your holy name. Give us good discernment on how best to give these dollars back to you to continue promoting your kingdom outside these walls and within inside these walls. Amen. And as long as I've got you standing, please join us in our closing praise song, Trust and Obey. Remember, before we accept our closing blessing, we have treats and coffee and water in uh, the area next door. You can bring it back in here. You can spill into any other spaces and spaces of the church and uh, continue in conversation.
So please accept this closing blessing. May you have wisdom in the seasons of chaos. And may you have strength in the seasons of difficulty. May you have joy in the seasons of sadness. And may you have peace in the seasons of conflict. May your light shine brightly in the seasons of darkness. And may God bless you in this season among us. And may the world know that through you and through us, and through the great love, grace, and justice of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.